Hi, this is Cezanne Alexander, and uh, today I'm with Rick Birkenstock, and we are both um, foundation members of the, uh, the Millix Foundation, and today we're going to talk about the Millix Ecosystem Support Program. And, and Rick, I'm so excited to, uh, to talk about this because this means that we've, we've made a lot of progress in developing Millix, that we're now ready to invite third party developers to our party. And you know, <clears throat> this reminds me of back, uh, I was on the Microsoft campus in uh, 1995 and the, the vibe and the energy and the, you know, the excitement around, around that launch was just, was just huge. And I, I'm feeling that same thing here and with Millix. Yeah, absolutely. I feel the same way. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned the Windows 95 launch and, you know, I, the, there are a lot of parallels in the, the way I feel about it as well. The, the big difference is we don't have the budget Microsoft does to license the Rolling Stones, you know, start me up, which they did uh, for all their TV commercials for Windows 95. But, you know, I think we've got as much excitement here, maybe minus the Rolling Stones. So thank you for welcoming me and thank you for being part of the Millix Foundation with me. That, uh, that, that day when they launched, my phone was ringing off the hook. You know, people were like, really? Are the Stones, are they there on campus? Did you see them? Were they at lunch? You know, <laughs> were they in the cafeteria? So yeah, we, we don't have the Stones, but, um, but yeah, the, the vibe is, we're still really excited about this. So, um, so the foundation, um, we have a, a role in, um, in, this, in this launch and in this making Millix big. And um, one of the things that we're doing is this Millix ecosystem support program. So that's what we're talking about today. Maybe you can give us a, a you know a high level overview of, of what this program is going to do. Yeah, absolutely. So the ecosystem support program, or if we want, we can just shorthand it as ESP. And, and when we talk about it, and you know, it's really intended. Well, let me say this: a lot of projects out there ha have a similar structure where there's a foundation that is interested in driving adoption. And uh, adoption means a lot of things, right? You wanna see more users come to the platform, but you also need to build you know, on top of the, uh, the initial platform. And that's, what, that's what's going on here, right? It's the same sort of idea. We need to drive user adoption. We're interested in driving uh, you know, growth of the ecosystem. And that means like, okay, we've built this foundation. Now we're super excited to see what other people want to have built, right? Um, there's a lot that can be imagined and built on this platform. In fact, it, it's really sort of limitless in a way. I mean, uh, you know, we've started out, we've, we've built, you know, the Millix platform itself, and we've put a couple of things out there for our beta group to begin using, such as the Tangled browser and take Tangled advertising. Um, but now we're ready for a lot more to get built. So that yeah, the Tangled browser and advertising is a that's a good example of something that we've that, that we're seeing as a, a a practical application that can be built on top of the Millix currency. And and it really that's the way we designed the the currency was to to be this um, toolbox or platform upon which developers can can come to Millix and say, hey, I've got this great idea and. And, and Millix is really the um, the Lego box of Legos that these guys are uh, developers can use. Yeah, I mean uh, that that's right. I mean it could be literally it could be just about anything, and you know it could be something really small from like a proof of concept to maybe a utility uh, set of functions that that help you know Millix or Tangled, for instance. Um, you know additional libraries, or it could be a complete you know, new plat not a new platform per se, but like, you know, we've, we've built Tangled advertising, right? What if somebody wants to build um, a component of Tangled Social, which might be uh, live casting, right? Uh, a live a streaming of live events, whether that's audio podcasting or you know, maybe a, a musical, uh, you know, event wants to stream their event or, you know, something of that nature, right? So it could be anything big or small, it could be a single developer. Uh, it could be a team that kind of approaches us, uh, you know, for, for funding. And we should probably talk a little bit about, you know, what that what what the funding mechanism looks like. Yeah. Right. But or it could be a company that 
says, you know, we, this is amazing. And this is exactly the platform we were waiting for to be able to build a solution XYZ that furthers our business goals, right? So we, you know, it could be anything large and small. It could be uh, also large to small in terms of the, the team or the individuals that approaches us to, to have, that, uh, have that grant or funding approved. So the so the ESP the program is is really a, a call to action for um, developers, um, single um, individuals, all the way up to corporations to um, to ask us for funding um, to to go ahead and provide them with some Melix to to develop their ideas for this platform. Is that is that how you describe this? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I mean. You know, the, the process will look something like this, right? We'll soon we'll have a, a page on millix.org that will make it really clear on how this all works. But just to give kind of a, a preview, um, or depending on when people are watching this video, it might just help explain how it works because it'll be already live on the site. But the, the idea is you have a great idea and you would like to build it, but you need some funding or want to get, you know, funding to, to you know, help build this, right? So you, you know, go to millix.org, look for the ESP uh, program page, and there you will see, you know, we'll have a, a list of some of the things that we're interested in people building, but it's by no means exhaustive. It might only be five or 10 ideas just to kind of get, you know, throw some things out there. Uh, but people can literally come to us with anything and the, the form, there'll be a form on that web page that'll help them describe what they have in mind, right? You know, what, what, you know, what do they want to build? You know, what, you know, what's the makeup of the team that's going to do it or the individual? Uh, and, you know, what's the timeline? What sort of funding are they looking for, uh, et cetera? And uh, on the topic of funding, what the Millix Foundation is prepared to do is we have, you know, a large amount of Millix set aside to fund projects and programs that we think are going to really drive adoption, both in terms of users and just in, in terms of expanding the platform and the overall ecosystem. So, you know, just to set expectations, not every single idea will get approved for funding. It really, you know, it has to be, you don't just fill out a form and then boom, Millix shows up. Uh, once you fill out the form, you know, we'll engage with that person or team to understand their ideas and their, their ability to deliver. And we'll, you know, if we like the idea and believe in their their abilities to deliver that, then we'll set up a, a program effectively to like, okay, look, this is how much funding we're going to give you, and here's how it will be, you know, parceled out, if you will. It'll typically, and I think this is probably the case with a lot of projects out there that follow the same um, methodology. So a lot of times it'll be, you know, milestone based, right? So it's, you know, as you right. as you deliver more and more functionality against your proposal. You know, more and more of the funding is released to to that team. Right, right. Well, so I hope this ages well, and that when, and that we say, oh, you know, we've got uh, this this wish list is done. But let's just talk about our current wish list because we've we've sat down and thought about the cool things that we would like um, people to work on now. So perhaps you can touch on a couple of things that we would would like to see done, just to give examples. Yeah, there's. Yeah, I can give. Maybe a, a you know a couple of couple of examples. It's just you know, and this is not we're not trying to dictate what people build, but we will kind of share some ideas of like what would be really cool if somebody was interested in doing it. Because at the same time, the team you know outside of the Millix Foundation, the the court you know Millix dot com team who you know and they're building Tangled and all all that. You know, they're not standing still. They're, they've got a roadmap that they're working on releasing, you know, products and features and services, right? But, you know, this is really an opportunity for, for anyone to participate. And so just a couple of ideas. I mean, one that might be on the simpler side, although I could be wrong about that, is like what if somebody wanted to, you know, enable a shopkeeper to sell you know, at, at a farmer's market, let's say, to be able to sell fruits and vegetables and take Millix, you know, at a point of sale uh, terminal, if you will, or, or on a smartphone, let's say, like, what would it take, you know, from a build perspective to, you know, 
create that and make it happen, right? Um, is that would right. that take the shape of a mobile application, for instance, with a Millix, you know, powered, um, you know, back end to it, right? Where there's, you know, allowing for the transactions to, to flow, right? And for that vendor to get, you know, receive payment. So that's a, an example of a small idea. A bigger idea is we'd love to see, for instance, any kind of gaming um, developers come forward and, and looking for a really interesting, you know, real time, uh, you, you know, payment uh, tokenomics for their game uh, to, you know, to approach us and look for, um, you know, a grant to enable their, you know, future gaming titles or, or platform. Uh, we'd love to be part of that um, as an ecosystem. <laughs> And Rick, let's talk, this is a good time to talk a little bit about features, even though um, we don't want to get too technical. But uh, but the gaming is great because Millic supports these um, microtransactions. And so this is a, a, a super platform for uh, the players of the game to actually earn uh, Millic's as points as they play, uh, as well as funding in-game purchases. That's so. exactly right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Millix yeah. enables all of those things, you know, because of the, you know, fee, f you know, very extremely low fee structure and the real-time nature of how the transactions flow. Yeah, this, this is something that right. could be enabled in, in a game, you know, and be a perfect fit. Right, right. So um, let's talk about uh, some other uh, things we're looking at. Uh, you know, there's a there's the uh, NFT the non fungible tokens buzz, and I I uh, read yesterday that uh, Seattle is opening a, a non fungible token museum here in a couple of days. So you know that's crazy, huh? So um, so I think we were talking about how Melix could be a platform for for those as well. Yeah, that, and that's that's right. I mean, and, and it's something that the. The internal team is thinking about like where would that fit on the roadmap. But if a but if an external team came came to the Millix Foundation and said, "Well, you know, we're, we're we're very capable and we're ready to go right now. We'd love to start building, you know, NFT on this platform." Then great, let's let's have that conversation because right now I think it's it's on the roadmap. I just you know like, but I don't know how far out it would be left to our team to build. It might take quite a while. So if somebody comes forward and says, you know, we, we're ready, we're able, and uh, let's build it, like, great, let's let's do that. Right. And then we were talking about exchanges too, and how how we could uh, engage in ex exchanges, and how there's a, a need there too. Yeah, for, there's for there's there's a lot of possibilities, right? And I, I haven't even spent enough time really thinking through it, but you know, there's a lot uh, in, in this space. There's a lot of uh, being built right now that enables cross-chain compatibility and how can, you know, how can certain tokens participate in decentralized exchanges or DEXs, right? How could I, how mm -hmm. could we enable that uh, with Millix? So we know those are ideas that will be interesting to, to the world and to the, the broader ecosystem for, for Millix. We just haven't thought through all the way like, well, you know, what would that look like exactly and what level of effort would it take? But we're excited to think that somebody might come to us and say, we know how to build that or we're, we're willing to take that on, um, you know. Right. And that we're willing to, um, instead of it just being a, um, a risk that they would take that it might work, it might not, we're actually uh, willing and able and excited about funding people uh, trying these things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the whole point, I guess you would say of, of the ESP program and the Millix that's been a set, set aside to fund these, these efforts, right? It's like, yeah, we're not expecting people to just right. build it because they're, they think we're really nice. <laughs> you know, they, you know, people need to be compensated for their time <laughs> and effort. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's the nature of the program and how it works. Right. So, um, so are we, is this a, a call to action for right now, or is this something that we're, you know, saying now, hoping that down the road we'll um, have, an, have this ready to go? No, it's ready right now. I mean, we're, yeah, if we're, teams were to approach us now, we're, we're ready to engage and understand, what, you know, what they want to have in scope and, you know, what effort it's going to take and what sort of, we, we can have that discussion around the funding level 
and how you know those disbursements would be made. But yeah, to, the short answer to your question is: Are we if we're ready now to engage third parties? Absolutely, yes. I mean, platform is is live and uh, ready to be built upon. So, what kind of people are we looking for? What what talent skills or I know you said earlier that the can be a, an individual, a team, a corporation, but but who are we hoping to um, attract with this? Yeah, that that's another really great question. I mean, I think initially it's going to be mostly people with you know software engineering skills uh, that are going to approach us. Now, if it's a team, they probably have somebody who's nominated or or the actual project manager because if there's more than you know one or two developers there's probably a lot of coordination that needs to happen but i would say in general it's going to be you know software engineers developers that um, have a great idea and have the ability to execute on that idea Um, just as a side note i guess you could say uh, we are also going to be it's not really germane exactly to this esp program but Separately, the Millix Foundation is going to be launching a, a certification program. So in other words, like if you're an engineer or software developer and you want to, you know, get certified in being a Millix developer, we'll have, we'll soon be launching that, that program as well. Like here's what you need to do if you want to be certified. And the good news is that, uh, you know, really it starts with just having a good, deep core knowledge of JavaScript development. And on top of that, we'll, okay. you know, we'll provide some training and certification about, okay, so you're really good at JavaScript. Awesome. You're like 90% of the way there. Let's give you the remaining 10% of the knowledge you need to be able to be effective in developing Millix applications. Okay. And if a, if a developer wanted to, um, to learn as much as they could about Millix before putting their pitch deck t- together or before filling out the, uh, the form, um, what would you recommend that they do? Well, uh, I would say start at millix.org for sure. I mean, there's there are a number okay. of assets there, including you know white paper, various tech papers, depending on what topic you're curious about, and also a lot of our you know podcasts and different use case videos and interviews of this this type that we're doing right now will be posted up there. So you can you can actually there's actually quite a lot <laughs> to read and consume on millix.org. Great. And then um, would you suggest that they look at um, what the Millix team has done with Tangled? You mentioned that. So Tangled.com and Millix.com might be good good places to look to. That's right. Yeah. So Tangled.com is another good resource that you could go and any, any person could go to and look at uh, the various you know, pillars of, you know, that have been built so far or on the roadmap, right? And that includes, you know, the Tangled Browser, uh, Tangled Advertising, Tangled Social, and Tangled Search. And under each one of those on the, on the homepage, you'll see the, you know, the technical paper that kind of lays out the use cases. It could be a useful model for anybody wanting to put together kind of their pitch, in terms of understanding like, well, this is kind of, this is a good amount of detail uh, of like, you know, how we, how the team has sketched out what's going to get built and how it's going to work and, you know, kind of building the, the wireframes uh, that, that will support that, that product or service, whatever it is that they want to build. Uh, in addition to that, you know, we have, um, you know, the, the team is interacting with people via Discord right now. So off of the Tangled homepage, they could also join our Discord and engage with the team, maybe uh, ask some questions, get some input on ideas and questions that they have, right? So that may then feed into, you know, creating a better proposal, uh, you know, for consideration to, you know, acquire funding for getting that proposal off the ground. Just one other quick thing I wanted to mention, Um, you know, when individuals or teams are thinking about you know, well, okay, he mentioned that, you know, really all I need to know is JavaScript and yeah, there'll be some additional, um, you know, knowledge that I'll need to acquire from them about getting certified to be a Millix developer, but that's relatively small in the grand scheme of things. The other thing worth mentioning is that none of this has been built with any special tools, right? So they're all, you know, widely available, you know, tools that our development team is using. There's nothing, you know, special or proprietary, 
um, or even very expensive, I think. So it's, you know, it's all stuff that's available out there. And, uh, and also just a final reminder that uh, everything we're building is open source. So um, it's all, you know, developers and, and teams can go and look at what's already been built and understand, you know, exactly, you know, the, the inner workings of what's under the hood, you might say, uh, of all the components that have been built to date. So that would be another good resource for anyone thinking about like, okay, well, what would it take and how would I snap in you know, my code and make sure that it, it, it meshes well with the overall um, foundation of, of Millix. So, uh, so that's fantastic, Rick. So they, uh, they may want to start with uh, Millix.org and all of the, the reading, the videos, the white papers, the tech papers there. And then Tangle.com is um, a good example of uh, projects uh, that, the, that the Millix guys have in, uh, in the works right now. And, uh, then uh, over on Discord, we've got a, a fun, robust group of guys that are were willing to answer questions and engage. And then finally, uh, the the code itself on GitHub, if that was something that uh, the developers wanted to take a look at, it's open source, and that uh, we just they just aren't going to need fancy extra new tools to um, to build something that will click in easily with Millix. That's right. Yeah. Perfect summary. Thank you. Yeah. For. <laughs> Taking my <laughs> long answer and making it very uh, simple, simple and easy to understand. So, so what's the so what's the next step for these guys? Once they've 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 gone and they've looked at all this and they're ready to go, then um, then what what do they need to do to engage with us? Yeah, uh, so real simple. I mean, the, the, if they're ready, if they've uh, you know fully kind of baked their idea and maybe they've engaged you know, with the team on Discord or not, it, it's, you know, up to them. Um, if they're ready to submit a proposal, a grant, you know, or a funding proposal, they go to the millix.org website, look for the ESP or Ecosystem Support Program page, and there there'll be a pretty lightweight, you know, form that they'll fill out, and it's, it's pretty straightforward. It, you know, just looking for, you know, a few paragraphs about what they want to build, uh, how, you know, what's the team profile like, um, how, you know, what do you see as the impact of what you're proposing to build? What additional needs or challenges do they, do they anticipate? And, you know, a funding request itself, like, well, how much Millix do you think you'll need to, you know, make this a reality? Um, and really, that's kind of it, you know, and, and, you know, some basics around, you know, how do we get in touch with you? And then, you know, click the submit button. There's also an option to like if if they're really overachievers and they've put together like let's call it a pitch deck of their idea maybe that you know they have some slides or a, or a, or a document that they want to submit along with you know the basic answers to those questions on the form they can do that as well uh, at that point okay. it'll you know land in our inbox for review uh, we'll begin you know we'll look at it straight away and and begin engaging with the team to flesh out the details and, you know, see if there's something there that we can take action on. So, yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Cool. Well, Rick, I am so excited about this. Uh, like I said, it's fantastic to be at the point where we can actually uh, put out this call to action and, and um, that we've got this, this platform, uh, this currency all ready to go. And uh, it's just really exciting to see what, what will come in and, um, and how this will take off. So um, thanks for this conversation. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, and I'm, I'm equally as excited to see what ideas people come forward with. <laughs>